All right, hello and welcome to chapter 16, video two. Don't forget to write your notes and upload them when we're all done. All right, we left off with um, how to map a network drive in a network printer. Uh, the idea is to give, for example, um, a folder, instead of just typing the path of the folder, you just type a letter, like the letter F. F colon, that will take you to a specific folder. But you have to set that up, that's called mapping. So how to map a network drive, write the following down. The client computer creates and saves a shortcut associated with the drive with a drive letter that points to the host's computer shared volume or drive. All right, so you can do that right in here. That'll be a good exercise to do. All right, so let's talk about the sync and offline files. So this is a good idea. So sometimes you want to take a file and you're not connected to the network, do all your work. Maybe you're on an airplane, in a hotel, and you spend a few days doing your work offline. And when you come back, you want to be able to sync to the server. All right, so this is where you go. The sync center. The sync center and, off, and offline files. The sync center is an applet in the control panel. We'll write this down. And allows two computers to sync to the content of the shared folder or volume. So what you need to do, if you want to do that, is to go to the panel and open the sync center. All right, so here you go. Uh, moving on. Hidden network resources and administrative shares. Sometimes you want to hide files or, or folders or anything like that. All right. So number one, write this down. Hidden, under hidden network and resources, you want to be able to know how to disable file and printer sharing. So how are you going to do that? You use network and sharing center. If you want to hide a shared file, you want to add a dollar sign at the end at the end of the shared name in the advanced sharing box. So right here, I don't know if you can see it or not, but there's a dollar sign right there. So once you place a dollar sign on this file, it will no longer be shared and you won't be able to see it. All right. Uh, or you can use the Active Directory domain services. All right. So the Active Directory domain services here, what I want you to write the last couple of notes. Um, it, <clears throat> number one, it authenticate or authenticates accounts and authorize what what these accounts can do. Secures the identities of services, computers, and users. Secures trust relationship with outside organizations and secures data and applications. The other thing that you need to know about the Active Directory uh, is there are things called organizational units, and organizational units are created to cre are created to make it easier for technicians to assign privileges to users and computers in the OUs. We'll call them OUs, organizational units. Privileges are assigned using policies created by the group policy. These group policies contained in, I'm sorry, these policies are contained in the group policies and they are called group policy objects, GPOs. Uh, they are, then later on you apply them either to user, or computer, and the OU. All right, anyway, so we don't really gotta get into details about the AD. Uh, we'll spend the whole semester doing this in our network operating uh, system and cloud computing course. So, because as a system administrator, this is a step, a step upward after being a help desk, you need to know how to work on Windows Server and Windows Azure network and how to authenticate users. So we'll be discussing all of this, but it's not a bad idea to go through this. You know, your server manages to create new users um, and you can do all of this. But the thing is you need to have the server. You can actually download Windows Server 2012 or Microsoft or even Windows 16 server and you'll be able to put it in, the, in your virtual box and you'll be able to do all of this freely. And that's what we'll do next semester. So you'll be able to set you know, uh, what time the user can log in and log out, administrative passwords, and, and so on. You can create boot policies. 
uh, but I, you know, group policy objects you'll be creating. Uh, but I think it's a little bit beyond the scope of this course, really, to get into system administration at this level. This is really not only a semester by itself, but really it could be several courses that you could do with the with the Windows Server. All right, but remember, the Windows Server now nowadays has moved to the cloud with Microsoft using the Azure, right? All right, short video. So write down a couple of things that I told you to write down, upload them, and I'll see you in Chapter 17.